What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Boynt. <laughs> I can't. Did I he can't. just call himself Jason Boynt? Boynt. Jason Bourne. Joint Jason He's Bourne. Jason Bourne. What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, joined by Danny, aka that one camera guy. And guess what? The A73 was on the show floor, and we got a chance to check it out. We weren't able to do too much shooting, but we were able to kind of dive into the menu and kind of see what's up with the camera if it's any different from the a7r3 yeah. so yeah what's cool is that we we're so familiar with the cameras already we, yeah we both have the a7r3 uh and we've used like the a7r2 at some point a7 yeah. two. and so, you have the a9 yeah and i have the a9 and so when i went in there the mindset was okay what's different right right okay. so what are some things that you noticed that were different i mean just picking up the camera everything just feels the same physically and everything the only one physical difference that I can see right off the bat was the lock button mm -hmm. on the mode dial. That would be the only thing that yeah. I've noticed. There, yeah, there's a lock dial. Obviously, uh, Jason will overlay something, but there is a there's a mode lock dial. On for the a R3? R3, also the, on the A9. On the A9, but not on the A7 mm -hmm. three, and that's pretty interesting. Yeah, and I'll give you, there was another thing that they didn't have. Oh, the, oh, oh, yeah, I forgot about there, that. There was forgot, one more. I forgot about that. What, what it do they call it? It was the PC sync cord or the, okay. the, the port, the PC sync port that's on the side. It's completely empty. Yeah. It's blank. It, it, it feels like something is missing when yeah. you get the camera, which is, I mean. They could have just threw in another USB. Uh, they could have. I mean, they <laughs> I don't been, know. there could have been something that. What could they put there? That's I don't know, but it's, it's definitely a missing gap. And I talked about this, like. In the uh, previous video, I was talking about the rumors. I said if they weren't going to include the dual mm -hmm. SD card slot, that it's going to feel pretty darn empty. But luckily, they did. But uh, you know, I have a good question for the people in, that are watching or sure. uh, watching later: Is do you who's still using that right now? Like using that's what? still using a PC sync the port PC sync for port. like Flash or something. Okay. Um, most I think a lot of folks have already gone wireless. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, flash point. So, but I'm sure there's still folks that can find some use. But I just don't know. Let let us know in the comments below, like who's still using that. But the, the the A9 doesn't have it. The or, A7 III, are you saying, or the A9? The A9. Well, the A9 does the A9 have the sync? I I don't or, know. It could. I believe so. Okay. I know it has an All Ethernet right. port for sure, but I don't know about that one. Yeah. I think this one does, but the A9 might not. Okay. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with. It's not, it's not really a territory that I kind of touch up on when I use the camera. So. All right. So those are differences right mm -hmm. now. Then how about just handling and, and usage-wise of it when you had your hands on it? It felt the same, right? It felt the same. It felt like I, I was just touching my R3. It's weird because I kept tr I kept trying to tell myself in my head that it was different. <laughs> like I kept saying, nah, I can't be as good as A7R3, mm -hmm. but it, it felt almost the same. Yeah. Literally, it, I tried to find something that felt different, the buttons or something, the placement oh. of the dials. It's all there. It's only the mode dial here and that missing port. Uh, that really seemed to be a little bit different. Yeah, and that was it. And I don't know if you had a chance to actually go through the menu itself, but for the most part, I didn't see anything that was too different from the R3. It even has that switch vertical and horizontal position mm -hmm. where if you rotate it horizontally or vertically, you can change different focus points for those. So if you need to switch between portraits or whatever from landscape to portrait, it's there on the A7 III, which I was surprised. Well, I'm glad that's also on there. Um, other than that, I... I yeah, like you said, the menus look the same. You have the My Menu option, which is great now. You can customize your own section and just jump to menus very quickly. I use it on my A7R3 all the time to get the things I forget how to change. Um, the rate feature is in there, too. The rate feature is there. Pixel shift. I mean, I didn't see it. For, like, I didn't try it. but Yeah, I mean, like, it's we, something that we don't use on our R3 yeah. too much, so it's not, not something that we're really looking for. Yeah. But S-Log 3, mm -hmm. S-Log 2, Hybrid Log Gamma, all there in this camera. We can also talk about the 4K um, in 24p and 30p. I was right. looking at it very carefully, okay. and it, it does crop. That's weird. I saw the crop. That's um, weird. Someone was telling me it doesn't crop. Was someone from, from there? And, that, and then we saw it. It's like, oh, I didn't know that. So <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they're learning the camera yeah. as, as it goes by. That just lets me like... know that everyone kind of figured it out in the same day. It wasn't all just like someone had it way ahead of time for these folks. So they just they probably just heard it too as yeah, well. Yeah, one of those type of things. But yeah, I, I was checking it and we at first we weren't sure and then we we checked it again. It's like, okay, there there is. It cropped in. Right, so how, how much time? Like 1.6 times, right? I don't know for sure, but there was a crop and yeah. well, it states in it, the actual literature it's 1.6. 1. 1. 1. 1.6 times. So, and we did a test before going in with the R3, 4K30, 4K24. We didn't see anything. No crop. No, no crop. crop from the R3. So it's, it's, it's weird. I don't um, know. Do you shoot 4K30? Sometimes, Sometimes, like if I need just a little bit of slow motion during like wedding prep or anything like that, I would shoot 4K 30. So kind of, so seeing this, I don't know how much that would affect me when I shoot weddings. I mean, 
when I pick up the A7 III, we'll definitely see. But yeah, yeah, for the most part, I stick to 4K24, highest quality setting, image quality, and all that stuff, plus um, 1080p60. So those are the two settings that I would jump back and forth the most on my A7 R3. Okay. All right. And then the next thing I want to look at is actually, actually autofocusing. Okay. All right. So that was something I, I jumped in there. I really wanted to see how good the autofocusing was on the actual A7 Mark III because they're kind of touting it. Baby A9. Mm -hmm. Baby A9, 693 right? 693 autofocus points. Yes. And the coverage is pretty much almost the whole thing. So I think you got a, you got a chance to actually shoot with it. A little bit, yeah. A little bit of it. More than I did, because I was too busy, like, yeah, going through the menu. Yeah, he was just doing B-roll. I was just doing B-roll He was just doing B-roll. I was actually trying to learn something <laughs> about the camera. Um, well, that's good. We both can have something to bring to the table. Um, and so when I was testing it out, the autofocus is really fast, really snappy. If you've ever used the A7 II, it's slow. Okay. This thing is a completely different animal. Um, I, do I know for sure if it's going to be fast as the A9? I won't know for sure until I actually get a unit to test in. Obviously, I'll have to wait till everyone else gets theirs. Mm -hmm. But um, when I do, I'll definitely do some tests with the A9 and do some comparisons, especially for low light, because I think that's where you're going to see the difference in the in the performance. Yeah. Um, the stuttering. Okay, so I checked this out. Mm -hmm. At 10 frames per second, you're going to see blah, 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 blah. You'll see it. You'll kind of see a gap, right? Okay. I think with the A7R 3 you don't see it. Okay. Okay. Um, do I have a battery in here? Uh-oh. But... With the A7 III, when you are at 8 frames per second, there's no stuttering when you okay. shoot. So if you're at 8 frames per second, there's no stuttering. You don't like, um, so if you have someone running across the screen, you'll, you'll be able to track them. Yes, there'll be a, bit, a little black um, right. that pops up, but you can still track them. But when you go to 10, it stutters. Da -da 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 you're, whatever you're watching, stuttering. And you're saying it doesn't happen on the A9 or the A7R3. The A9, it does not at all. It's like watching video. You're okay. literally just watching a video. It's like you're just photographing an entire video. Speaking about the A7R3 and its autofocusing, uh, as far as the blackouts concerned, with the A7R3 compared to the A uh, A7R3, it's very similar. At 10 frames per second with the A7R3, you're going to get that stuttering that happens when you're trying to track an object. Um, you can get used to shooting like that and take advantage of it. When you're shooting at 8 frames per second, for example, on the, uh, I think it's 8 frames per second on the A7R 3 you get that little bit of a blackout, but you're not lose. it's not stuttering for you, so you can definitely still track your subject. So that that's what I noticed very similar to the two cameras. And I think the last thing we can maybe touch up is uh, rolling shutter, just oh, on our initial impressions of what you saw. It seems similar with the A9, did it? I don't know. I mean, like, I never shot with the A9 for video. But, but just said, looking at it when you were kind of tweaking, I didn't see. There is. I didn't notice any rolling shutter. I mean, like, if there is, I mean, like. It would look very subtle. Okay, now, subtle. now, I was trying it at 24 millimeters. It was very subtle, okay. very little. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, when I, I zoomed into 50, past 50, you could tell a little bit more. So rolling shutter is always going to be there. Obviously, if you're panning really fast, you're going to see something. Right. I don't think. I mean, obviously, yeah, if you go like this, it's, it's not a global shutter. Right. So. It's there, but uh, I would have to do more tests. I, I, it's not something you'd have to put yourself in a situation to, to see it in a real right. world kind of case. But but the sixty five hundred, I mean, I handhold it. I just pan really slowly if I do yeah. any sort of motion shots, and it's be the same thing I would do with the A seven three. So rolling shutter wouldn't be the biggest deal to me, but for anyone who's thinking about doing a lot of yeah movements, I mean, that might I, be I would say to concern. make a guess, but I would assume that the the rolling shutter is much more controlled on A seven three, for example, versus like an A sixty three hundred or yeah. a sixty five hundred. That's much, it's very noticeable. It's much more controlled for those cameras. It's really bad. I mean, for what I, think I would that's do. one of the things that they were talking about yeah. when they first came out. So now it's something that yeah, it's not so I, much of a problem. Hopefully, okay. But I'm sure someone let us know in the comments and might have had a better chance and opportunity to use it because it's something I'm not one hundred percent sure on. But um. Other than that, uh, Jason Vong, any more thoughts? Are you? We already kind of talked about whether or not we're going to get one. Um, what's the defining features, one or two or so, that are, is the reason why you're looking into potentially getting one? The 6K full pixel readout, and like I said, um, it's just the color. Yeah. The color, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's very similar to the A7R 3 I wanted to be consistent with what I'm shooting with the R3, so definitely drop in my R2 to get that. So that would be one of the two things, the two of the two things that I... Um, okay we get the camera for what about yourself um it's it's the battery <laughs> it's that's the battery okay, I forget, yeah i forgot about that the battery it's the consistency and that's mm -hmm. the reason why i'm saying i know there's myself and jason we kind of operate in a very different scenario and i know people kind of get frustrated because you know we kind of review stuff and so we always pick up different gear i know yeah. a lot of people are out there they don't they, you know you make one purchase and that's it mm -hmm. we completely understand that 
Um, that's why, you know, we're trying to unload certain equipment to enable to upgrade to the next thing. Um, but the consistency in the battery is a big deal. Yeah. Right? I'd rather have just one set of batteries than having to carry even the NPF 50, the smaller ones. So uh, my hope is that in the, the future, the APS-C stuff will eventually start migrating and move over to that. But I, I'm going to ask you kind of a, a, a question that's out there. Is is APS-C kind of dead right now? No, no, don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> is APS-C dead? It's, I mean, like... They're not releasing lenses for Sony. It's uh-huh. themselves aren't releasing lenses for it. It's been a while, so. Well, they had one, the eighteen and one thirty-five, but it wasn't the kind of lens that the prosumer APS-C yeah, they want a wanting. constant f two eight aperture, yeah. which I don't know. But the thing is, if let's say for example the A seven three drops, but I mean, look, the A seven two is going to drop in price. The A seven R two is going to drop in price. Full frame is going to be even more affordable for people. Yeah. Now I wouldn't necessarily jump on the A seven. Okay, I wouldn't jump on that necessarily, but. Um, <laughs> But imagine in a couple of years, the A7 III is going to be like around fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500, I would imagine. And the barrier to entry is going to change. And, yeah. I, and I don't see the benefit of the APS-C as much anymore with, by the way, Sigma's release of new lenses. Yeah. And that, that just dropped. That's for sure now. That's uh, that's official. Yeah. And that's going to be compatible with the Sony A7 III, mm-hmm. making, making the entire setup very affordable to anyways jumping hey. into the full frame. And, right and we got Tamron I'm looking at the 28 to 75 FE. That thing is so skinny, man. Yeah. It just, it's tiny. Compact it, lens. They don't have to worry about making a 24 millimeter yeah. wide angle lens. So with that, that 28 to that 75 is just... You might lose that wide end for some folks that really need it, but it could be very versatile lens and, and lightweight. It's a great running gun lens. Yeah. It'll be a great running gun lens. So those are my thoughts on the uh, the A7 III. Uh, it's really great. I'm just glad they had it on the show floor. I was really worried about that. Yeah. Jason, any final words? No, let us know if you're going to pre-order the camera and what, what reasons you have to get this camera or upgrade from a certain camera. Uh, pre-order links are down in the uh, description box below. Mm-hmm. That's going to do it for me. I'm that one camera guy. Thanks. Peace. See you later. What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vaughn. Bo- <laughs> <laughs> God, I can't. It's a great blooper reel here. I'm just letting you know that right now. If it'll ever show. What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, joined with AKA, AKA <laughs> Danny, AKA that one camera guy. We're gonna have to do that again. Oh my Damn gosh. It. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go.